Hello, my name is Reverend Michael Moran, and today I have the great pleasure of talking with the Executive Secretary of the Brahma Kumari International, Brother Merton Jay. Brother Merton Jay, welcome. Thank you for being with me and taking the time today. I am delighted to meet you, Brother, to travel all the way from America to this land of divine, land of peace. So I most welcome to you to <laughs> this you place. Thank you very much. And it was worth all of the discomfort and all of the time to get here for this great event. The last time that I was here in India was almost exactly 10 years ago this oh. month. And uh, the changes that I've seen are absolutely tremendous, not only in India, but uh, here on this, this beautiful campus. It just continues to expand and get better and better and better. So... Yeah, this is uh, the founding father of the Ishwari Vishwavidyanaya called uh, Dada Lake Raj and mm -hmm. later called Prajapita Brahma Baba and the incorporeal Godfather Shiva whom we believe as a Supreme Father, Supreme Soul, a Supreme Teacher. They had earlier itself, when he was in physical uh, alive, revealed lot of truth, lot of information, lot of visions, lot of enlightenment. In that Murali itself, he had said that a day will come, the whole world will come to Mount Tabu to embrace the spirituality, to experience peace of mind, to experience true love in life. Like that Baba has said earlier itself, what I am seeing today, it, this vision is becoming true, practical. So it's interesting that uh, Baba had that vision uh, about 80 years ago. And, you know, we always get the vision first. That's like the seed that is planted and then watch that seed unfold into a full plant. And that's, that's what we're witnessing today is the, uh, the harvest uh, that just keeps getting better and better and better. I wanted to ask you, um, because you've been involved with the Brahma Kumari, what was it that brought you here in the first place? Why did you come? Very first, I would like to say, the one man vision has become one million souls vision now. Wow. In the entire planet, when Baba started in the early days, it was only one person. Later on, it spread to about 400 people, started coming and joining and experiencing the truth and real life style. Then slowly and slowly, it has spread now today to the entire globe now. It has become one million souls vision. For me, uh, it was more interesting. I was a Bangalore University student. I was studying. And one day, I was passing through one of the center of Brahma Kumaris. At that time, there was hardly only one center in the entire South India. That too, in a very small uh, room, a small house. Not only an institution, but it was in a small house. And then uh, I used to watch daily the big board called Prajapita Brahma Kumaris Ishwariya Vishwidhyaya. Normally, universities means big campus, big lot of books, lot of courses, lot of so many professors and all these things. But it was housed in a small building, in a house. Then uh, one evening I was going for a badminton and then I asked my friend, Can, shall we go to the center and see what is what kind of an education they are offering? Is it a coaching class for any students? Like that, uh, my entry was started. There were few people, about 10, 12 people were sitting in meditation. One of the senior dadi whom we call, lovingly called Rudhe Pushpa Dadi at that time, mm -hmm. she was initiating meditation. But I was not knowing what kind of a meditation they practice and yoga they practice. But it was a open eyes. She was giving drushti to each one like that, silently. And she, for more than a 15 minutes, I was sitting at the back side of the a small room and then no one talked to each other and she also did not uh, talk with anybody but she gave a drishti to me. Now tell me when you would say drishti, I mean mm. I, for those that don't know what that is, explain what drishti means. Drishti means a giving a concentrated soul conscious power and also disseminating the divine power through eyes, through pure feeling. And through eyes, drishti is called giving uh, through eyes and seeing the soul, a soul in front of yes. me, the sitting soul, not the body, entire body, but considering that uh, drishti, uh, that uh, so and so sitting in front of me is also part of the divine light and is a soul and is also son or a daughter of a divine 
like that that feeling with that pure feeling of divine and brotherhood feeling they give the drushti in that drushti they radiate pure feeling it may be peace it may be love it may be happiness it may be harmony it may be blessings and also transmitting energy power how, how did you experience it yeah, at that, that time that was the very first day i experienced a, a kind of a pure feeling a beautiful serene atmosphere and love i experienced mm-hmm. it and immediately mind thoughts waves stopped i was thinking of so many things coming from the uh, college and going for a uh, sports purpose and then normally a person come from outside and sitting in a small room will have a different background thoughts in that mm-hmm. but immediately i was quite silent immediately become silent and then my my focus was only towards the uh, silence and in that silence i experienced a deep peace of mind that is how the very first day impressed uh, me in this organization and isn't that what every every soul is looking for is that peace of yeah. mind yeah and when you find that place that you can actually experience that yes. not just know about it but experience it yeah uh, the very first day i had experienced that experience did not last for only a few minutes after going to my home and then i was started ex- enjoying that one feeling i enjoyed it and then i did not get sleep up to 12 o'clock so i think what was what was that silence what kind of an experience that i received it that has it, it has created me joy in my life happiness in my life a kind of a new thoughts waves in my life and then i was thinking like that one uh, immediately after few minutes some senior brother of the organization at that time a brahma kumari mm-hmm. organization and then uh, he asked i mean about my introduction i told that i am a final year student of a um, bangalore university and then i am studying so and so and uh, i just came after seeing the board of this ishwari vishwavidyalaya what kind of an education you are offering in, through this institution or what kind of a coaching that you are giving mm-hmm. are you preparing some coaching classes and then he said no 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 we are d- n- teaching a divine knowledge here i was surprised what kind of a divine knowledge because we know arts commerce science engineering medical this and that there is no courses in divine knowledge. divine knowledge right I, i was thinking beforehand i i was reading some research that went a long time ago as princeton religious research center and they were it, this was taking place in in the united states of america but i think it would probably apply worldwide and they were asking people the question why did you choose to go to a particular church or spiritual path as an adult not as a child because as a child we go where our parents tell us but as an adult why did you go there why did you stay there and if you left why did you leave and what they found was the number one reason people went to a particular church as an adult was because uh, usually a friend would invite them you invited your friend to come with you yeah the reason that they stayed was because they found a community that that were felt comfortable and accepted them and then the, the number one reason that they left was because during a time of crisis in their life either the community didn't support them or the teachings didn't support mm-hmm. them but it sounds like you found all of that at it the brahma kumaras i found a wonderful relationship here i found a wonderful beautiful meaningful knowledge here i found a new vision for my life i also found a new vision for the whole society mm-hmm. what kind of a society should be and what kind of a society we have today and how we can transform them by transforming ourselves all these kinds of things and then daily experiencing a peace that i found here in this institution mm-hmm. the very first day i experienced it and that experience it was sustained by the uh, leaders of the organization at that time as i said one of the leader i considered as a divine mother i used to call is called godly mm-hmm. mother holy mother i used to call it our dadi rude pushpa the holy mother uh, i was hearing for many years and i was reading yogis can give drushti and they can transform they can transmit the power 
I was just to read some books of the holy books, but I never had any such an experience. A holy mother like Rude Pushpa transmitted energy to me in few minutes and then transformed my life and my vision, my purpose, my goal, my study, everything he changed from worldly life to the divine life. Yes. It's, it's interesting because I think that for so many of us, you know, as you said, you read the Holy Scriptures. That's knowledge. We, 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 we learn, but it, it, it hasn't internalized itself yet. Because for me, and maybe we're using different language, there's knowledge which I know about something. And then there's wisdom when yeah. I know it. I know it to, to, the, to the heart and soul of my being. Mm. And oftentimes it is because of that first teacher for me, it was a woman as well, yes. uh, a, a minister that I met that, you know, told me that I, that I wasn't separate from God. That, and I'd never heard that concept before. I always thought that God was out there someplace, and all of a sudden, here's somebody telling me, God is in you. You're a, you're a precious part of God, and God is all of you, every cell, every atom, every molecule. And that changed my life. And, and it was at that time, like for you, you never look back. Normally, people believe that God is called omnipresent. But after coming to this institution, I understood the truth. Number one, God is not omnipresent, but he is called omnipotent. Yes. So, just like the sun is in one place, but he radiates the light. We experience the light and we connect with the sun also. And we work as per that light uh, uh, experiences and light feelings also. So also I realized that after coming to this institution, God is the supreme teacher, supreme father, supreme preceptor, are called supreme light. And that light I experienced it. And he has no religion, he has no tag, he has no uh, Hindu God, Christian God, Islamic God, and then and different qualities for a different religion. It is an universal truth, I realize. That is why my sustenance has become easy and then the constant development, constant growth and that my faith never broken. Yes. My faith and sustainable faith and then continuous uh, relationship is developed. That is the wonderful thing that I experience in this organization. In spite of I studied earlier a lot of scriptures and I was born and brought up in a very religious family, mm -hmm. very orthodox religious family. In spite of all that, I never had a good experience. But here I had an experience, a truth I found. And that, and that's that spirituality, which is universal. Yeah. You know, and I love when we use the symbol, and you use the symbol of light, because um, somebody once explained to me that said, you know, God is the light, and like shining through a beautiful stained glass window with hundreds of different panes, coming, you know, reflecting as red or yellow or blue or orange, but it's the same light reflecting through those different panes, but it's the same light. And oftentimes we start thinking our pain is the only, you know, pane of glass there is. But the truth is, it's the light that shines through. I agree through. with the truth because each soul has derived some kind of, some qualities from the divine. Yes. And they reflect in their day-to-day -day life. And many times we do not practice the whole divine qualities of the Divine Father in our life. We also sometimes copy the mundane, worldly people, worldly things, worldly nature, worldly mm -hmm. effects and feelings, in which we mix it up ourselves and forget the essence and true spiritual light. And but whereas in this organization, we teach godly knowledge plus yoga, and the yoga it purifies the mind. It purifies our nature, it purifies our consciousness, it makes us more and more clean, clear, pure and peaceful. Yes. One of the things that I've, uh, we were talking about just before we began our interview today, um, that worldwide religious organizations and spiritual organizations seem to be contracting. They're losing membership and yet the Brahma Kumari International is expanding. Why, why is that, do you think? In this organization, we believe one God, one world family. Yes. For every individual, there is only one God. 
there may there are so no hundreds of god millions of god millions of brothers and sisters may be there there is only one god for the entire universe that philosophy is taught here and that not only just the teaching the practice and then one god one world family when we believe that god is one and we are all his children and we are all members of the same family so there cannot be a different there may be a bodily different color may be different and then food habits may be different we have come from a different cultural background also but the world world divided in the name of a nations and this may be different but still by soul conscious we can unite ourselves so that is the philosophy behind this organization one god one world family so we are all family members i am talking with my family brother and uh, this is our eternal value other all other values may be a short time lived values but this is an eternal value that we practice that is why the organization is going from every day every month every year and from since 80 decades the organization has spread now in 140 countries let's talk about some of the numbers because you started with one man mm. with with a vision mm. with enlightenment and he was led to um set the leadership into the female hands yes. which was very radical and even dangerous at that time in an era when women had very little authority if any at all mm -hmm. and very little value and yet he uh was was radical enough and brave enough to do that and look at what ha what's happened starting with that and about 400 original followers how many centers are here in india and around the world today right now we have got about uh, 9000 centers uh, in india itself is about uh, 8500 center another about 500 center in different countries around mm -hmm. uh, 140 countries around we have got centers and in some of the places it is not recognized as center or in the sense because in some middle east country or some china the government has not fully recognized it however our activities is going on some people interested individuals are practicing in their own way the direction of the divine mm. and each one should translate in their life and see that should be practiced in their day to day life and that is why the organization going from one man to one million souls vision we have just a few minutes left and um I used to have a television program and a radio program called mm -hmm. Vision for a Better World where I talked with people like you yourself uh, from um the different uh, disciplines medicine and science and religion and economics and uh, I would always ask them as the very last question of the program uh you know brother Martin J what is your vision for a better world my vision in very shortly the world is going to be big transformation takes place you individuals will give a good leadership and that leadership will continue for a long period later on also and this whatever we see the uh, dirtiness in mental pollution air pollution water pollution sound pollution economic disparities political disparities and religious disparities all will now slowly slowly will going to be washed out we call is called a transformation and then a new concept will be begin the concept of concern with with full of caring sharing loving and enjoying each other and then uh, helping each other like that that kind of a culture will be stopped now generally people will exploit instead of ex uh, supporting it exploiting the man exploiting the woman exploiting the child exploiting the money exploiting the uh, natural wealth and uh, that the word exploitation will disappear but they always share we call is called devatva dena means to give 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 others now generally people think in the back side of the mind outside they may say many things to take 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 mm -hmm. this concept will be changed and once this concept is changed in the society then automatically the new era will be emerge and we call is called satyuga or pure world otherwise we call uh, based on truth based on love based on happiness based on sharing based on true understanding of soul conscious and we call is called a golden age
the golden age. It's from Iron Age to Golden Age, the, the society will go into transform very soon from Iron Age to the Golden Age. So, whatever we are seeing today from these naked eyes or what we are experiencing through our mind and that will be changed and new era will be emerged. A preparation is going on now. <laughs> that is the reason so many people are attracted to the to this institution, to this movement. And because everybody wants peace, everybody wants true love, everybody wants a sustainable development, everyone wants to have one-to-one -one pure feelings. And that feelings have to be generated. And the, what this institution is doing, generating the pure feelings. I support that vision for a better world. Thank Brother you. Merton J. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Om you, Shanti. Brother. Om Shanti. This has been Reverend Michael Moran, and I've had the pleasure of talking with the Executive Secretary of the Brahma Kamari International, Brother Merton J. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day, and Om Shanti.